to a new phenomenon, civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. They're called adventurers with purpose and they have become pretty popular on social media. But for families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is also a last hope of sorts. Bob Woodruff has more. There's a hint of magic in this family. To the outside world, baby Oakley hasn't a single care, wrapped up in the loving arms of mom and dad. But for Desiree Carpenter, the love she shares with little Oakley is an opportunity to give her baby girl something she never had herself. I never grew up with a mother, so I didn't have that to go off of. I try to give her that relationship uh, with her mom that I will never have with mine. On a warm, windy evening in September 23 years ago, Desiree's mother, 19-year-old Samantha Hopper, dropped off then four-year-old Desiree at her grandmother Debbie's house before driving off with her two-year-old daughter, Courtney. I'd sit on my front porch watching the road. She never come back. <laughs> Samantha disappeared without a trace. Despite a lengthy police investigation that went on for two decades, there were no signs of her or her young daughter, Courtney, vanished and missing for more than 23 years. I filled out so many missing person reports that every time you do that, you have to give them a picture. And I don't have no pictures left. Despite the pain, despite the anguish, Samantha's case, tragically, is anything but unique. Every year, more than 600,000 people go missing in the United States. It's been called the nation's silent mass disaster, a trend that presents an alarming reality for families and law enforcement. I lost hope. I just got to a place where I was like, there's no way she's alive. She just can't be alive. And I think when I had my daughter, that sealed it for me. I was like, there's no way. There's no scenario where I could see walking away from my daughter. It almost hurt more to think that she could be alive. While her hope may have been fleeting, her determination was not. Unable to get anything concrete from law enforcement, Desiree's search for answers took her to an unlikely place. YouTube. Let's just kind of start at the very beginning. And a group of guys with a boat, some sonar, some diving gear, and a willingness to search in places where others could not. I had a friend. She was in a Facebook group with me. Somebody had posted that there was a diver coming. My friend saw it, tagged me in it, telling me, you need to get in contact with these people and um, see, you know, if they can help you. They are adventures with purpose. A team of volunteer divers scouring the country looking for missing persons cold cases. Jared Lysick and Doug Bishop are not law enforcement, but a couple friends coming from humble beginnings. So I started uh, a YouTube series called Adventures with Purpose in July of 2018. And that was, you know, just simply getting in the water, showing what was out of sight, out of mind, picking up pop cans, bottles. When did you make that shift from trying to clean something off the bottom of the, uh, of the lake to somehow trying to find all sorts of pieces of evidence from previous cases and find human bodies? It became a calling, you know, when a family reached out to me in the fall of uh, 2019. They had seen these videos that we were putting up on YouTube as finding vehicles and pulling them out of the water. And they reached out and they said, you know, we have a lost loved one here in Warrenton, Missouri. We believe that he's in the water. We have a cell phone ping at this boat ramp. Can you come help us? Because nobody else is helping us. With so many families feeling like there's nobody to help, Jared and Doug are filling a critical need, going where police and investigators rarely have the tools, technology, and skills to go. What's the percentage of success on this? When you start searching, how often do you get the results that you want? For the cases that we take on, between 15 and 18% is what we're currently solving. So we have a 20, 18% chance today that we'll find. For law enforcement, I'm, I'm sure that the statistics are close to a half of a half of a percent 
of them solving a cold case. Their adventures so far are making an impact. They say they've already solved 20 cold cases and in the process have become social media sensations with more than 2 million subscribers on YouTube yeah. racking up more than 200 million views. Today, on these ponds and lakes in central Georgia, they're trying to find answers about a missing father whose family says has vanished without a trace and hasn't been seen for months. Their work is in many ways a double-edged sword, a delicate balance between offering up hope and sobering truth. Failure means another day of no answers for these grieving families. Success means confirmation of their greatest fears. People call you up, the family, they contact you when they almost know for sure that they will not be found alive. That's a tough one, you know. Normally they're reaching out to us because they have had a friend or a family member that has seen our show on YouTube or Facebook, and we don't charge them a dime for our time. Same thing with law enforcement. We don't send them a bill for what we do either. We're right there side by side with them. On this day, they would not find that slim chance of success. Not every family gets an answer to their questions. Not every story has an ending. Sometimes they will go years without a sliver of truth to go off of. But sometimes in those slimmest of chances and those most wishful of hopes, they find an answer. Jacob has a vehicle underwater. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not know what this vehicle is until we dive on it. So I just want to err and caution, yeah, you know, please remain optimistic, but in, until I get into until the water, get in the water yes, we don't, we don't know. know. In October, 23 years and one month after she went missing, Jared and his team found Samantha and Courtney. Her car sitting in less than 10 feet of water, just a few miles from her home, ever since that fateful September night. For me, when I went up on the bridge and spoke with the detective uh, who is over my mom's case, in that moment, talking to him right there next to that record and him pulling her purse out of the car and showing it to me, I was like, okay, this is it. I don't have to deny it anymore. I don't have to tell myself that it's not her to make it feel better. It's her. It was so painful, but it was almost like a relief. It was like a release. She didn't let me. She didn't leave me. She would have never left me. People spend their lives searching for purpose, for meaning, for an aim to our lives that makes sense. But sometimes purpose isn't found in the things we do for ourselves, but the moments we give to others that makes all the difference. I don't have peace yet. People keep telling me at least I have closure. I don't feel like I have closure. I have a hundred more questions than I had yesterday. What I do have now is I have a place where I can take my daughter one day and I can take her to visit my mom and my sister. And I think for me, over time, I hope that I can learn to be okay with this. Wow, that team's work appreciated by so many families, especially the Hopper family. Our thanks to Bob for that report. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.